Hi everyone, my name is Joseph. Before we start discussing House of the Dragon, I just want to give a quick FYI. Uh, if you guys hear a slight humming sound, excuse me, that's my fan. It's summertime where I'm at, so it's getting quite warm and hot. And pardon me, for the past two or three videos, I think it's been the three videos, uh, that sound that one hears, it's because of that fan. I should have explained that with the first video, so excuse me, pardon me, but I do appreciate your patience. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and discuss House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 1. So right off the bat, I have to say that... um. Was I a little bit nervous about going into season two? Uh, I have to say I was a little bit just because as someone who hasn't read the uh, Fire and Blood, I know it's not really a novel per se. It's more of a fake historical document. Um, I am aware that there's really no dialogue. So the dialogue is being created by the writers of the show. And then the only other reason why I was a little bit concerned is just because I don't like to talk about Game of Thrones the last season just because I feel like I got a lot of hate and uh, it's really been discussed up to this point. Um, but just... The way that the show uh, Game of Thrones began with such quality and then as it continued forward, uh, that quality kind of became a little bit uh, questionable. I was worried that, uh, 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 what's that term for TV shows? The uh, the sophomore blues, I believe, in TV shows where the first season is great but the second season is not as great. I was essentially a little bit worried about that. I know we only got one episode of the second season, but so far I have to say, uh, I think the, sec the first episode does a really fine job of not only continuing where the story left off from season one, but also of wanting the audience to continue the story past episode one. Uh, as a lot of people have already pointed out, uh, the actress who plays uh, Rhaenyra, she does a really great job. Uh, she only has one line. Uh, I might be wrong about that. Maybe it's two lines, but for sure it's no more than three lines. Yet despite having so few lines, uh, her presence on the screen really helps to carry that she's mourning the death of her son. So of course, spoilers, one is unaware at the last of the first season. Uh, her, her her youngest son is unfortunately killed in the unfortunate uh, I would say it was an accident it was not done on purpose but when Amon has his dragon Vagar um, cheese and chase uh, Luke no it really his name was Jace uh, there's so many characters I had to get these names uh, in order so pardon me about that but the youngest son he ends up being chased by Vagar and ends up getting accidentally uh, munched on unfortunately. Uh, the show does a really good job of showing how Rhaenyra is dealing with that, dealing, dealing with that fallout of her compared to her husband, um, Damon, who I would argue is taking it much more in an active role, in an active manner. He wants to act rather than just uh, planning. Uh, but I would also argue that he would rather plan for an actual action than just uh, 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 sitting around. Uh, lamenting and being concerned about what's occurring uh, in the family currently. Uh, with, the, with that out of the way, we also have the other side of the story where we see, um, oh no, excuse me, uh, uh, Allison, <laughs> uh, lapse of judgment, Allison, and the way that unfortunately she's starting to become a hypocritical character, not just herself, but also the individual that she's having an affair with. Um, all these names, unfortunately, Co, Sir, Sir Co, uh, excuse me. <laughs> um, what I'm talking about, though, one has seen season one. Uh, Allison makes a point of uh, not mocking, but utilizing a detail of Renary's having an affair with Sir Co Christian, and just using that against Renary's to make Renary's uh, feel devalued and feel lesser than in being queen. Uh, and now we see that Allison, she's starting to do the same actions, having this affair. Um, is it an affair? Excuse me, I'm trying to think. Who is Allison? Oh, excuse me, she's a widow now at this point. That's right. <laughs> so technically, it's not an affair, but still, uh, one is not supposed to have relations with the personal guard. And what's so cool, I'm really hoping, I have faith in the writing, uh, the writers of the story, and that, so an element of the story is that since Sir Christian Coe was having a relationship with Allison, this took him away from his duties. So the way that the episode ends, it ends with the death of one of the royal children, uh, since, um, the son of Renarius was killed. David makes a choice for a son to be taken for the son, or a son for a son, uh, the, as the show is titled, and also as the actual quote is coming from the show. And uh, uh, Damon ends up hiring two individuals who are assassins, not assassins, but one of them is a city guards member, and the other one uh, is a rat catcher. Uh, Blood and Cheese are the nickname from the books and from the show as well. And um, these two characters end up assassinating uh, I guess assassinate is not really the correct word because I was usually done in secret, right? <laughs> uh, they end up murdering, killing the youngest son 
of uh, of uh, the current king and Helena. I forget the other king's name again. So many names. Pardon me. Excuse me. Um, but the one who's currently crowned for the Greens and Helena's. Uh, again, uh, Helena, uh, the one who's currently crowned, and their child ends up being murdered. And because of that, that's how the episode ends. And uh, I have to say, uh, a lot of people were disappointed in the fact that these murderers are able to go into the royal keep. Despite them being rat catchers with a really good alibi, uh, there apparently gets revealed that specific rat catchers go into the royal keep to catch rats. Yet despite this, they're able to do so quite easily. And I like how a lot of people pointed out, well, hopefully, again, I have faith in the writers that in the next episode, in tonight's episode, it's going to be pointed out that the only reason why rat and, uh, rat and cheese, wine and cheese, <laughs> Not blood and cheese, excuse me. <laughs> blood and cheese. The reason why they were able to get so far and succeed in the mission was because of Christian Cole being away from his station. So, fingers crossed that the show will uh, reference that. Sometimes other shows, uh, I have faith that they'll be coming back to that idea the next episode, the next season. But unfortunately, it doesn't come to be. A really good example about this would be like, for example, the bear, an incident that occurs in season one. Another example about this would be from... Um, uh, the boys in an incident that occurred in season three, I believe, uh, or maybe it was season two. I can't remember, recall the specific. Um, oh my bad, no, 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 not the boys. I'm sorry, because something that occurred in the boys is reminding me of another show, Stranger Things. Something that occurred in Stranger Things, um, where in the last, the latest season, season four, I believe, Stranger Things, where it's never followed up upon. Unfortunately, it's just swept under the rug. So again, fingers crossed that the show will come back to with tonight's episode. Um, but uh, the. Episode 1 does a really fine job of making the audience, if one is supporting the Blacks, uh, Renaries, if one is supporting the Greens, Allison, of giving both sides an element to watch and continue watching. One could argue that Allison was definitely portrayed in more negative light, uh, but we're only in episode one of season two. As we continue forward, I'm sure there'll be, opp there'll be chat opportunities. I'm sure there'll be, there'll be uh, times where the show would demonstrate how Renaries is also, quote unquote, maybe lacking to be queen or why she shouldn't be queen. Um, but yeah, so uh, I think season two, episode one does a really great job. If one is not watching House of the Dragon uh, because they want to wait for the whole series to drop, I definitely do see that perspective. Uh, but I think by doing so, one might be, well, first of all, running the risk of falling into spoilers. And I would argue that uh, that's always a hard thing to navigate, especially when something's based on a novel, because not only do you have to worry about, if you make the choice to not watch and consume something currently, not only do you have to watch out for those who do watch the show, but of course also those who uh, watch, who also consume the original property, because then they're going to have want to have a, uh, they're going to want to have a discussion about the show in relation to the book, and then you're going to have the show, only viewers are going to have conversations about the show, right? So, one will run the risk about that, and then there's, even within episode one, Besides for the fact again, spoilers that a son is killed, there's also other minor elements that uh, I would argue that um, one wouldn't want to be spoiled by. Like for example, it's very minor, but if one was hoping for a conversation between Allison and um, uh, uh, Amon, not Amon, I'm sorry, yeah, Amon, the one who killed uh, Luke or slash Jace, uh, they might be disappointed to f to tear. Uh, that there is no discussion so one is hoping to have that conversation because i believe in the books there is a conversation about that but that was omitted unfortunately uh, again you might set yourself up for disappointment because you have a small expectation and even if that expectation is not met um it would still be a little bit disappointing i'm not gonna lie i'm projecting a little bit uh when i was going into the second season i was really hoping for that conversation between allison and her son and unfortunately, it never comes. She does make a remark. There's a scene where the uh, she's having a meeting with her console. And uh, randomly, Eamon comes in and she's quite upset. She states that you have no place here. But then he says and explains that the king uh, invited him. And the king states that uh, he's his closest blood and best sword. So, of course, it's good to have him in the uh, presence of our war discussion. And uh, Alicent makes a comment. What was the comment? Um, I forgot specifically. Uh, but par I'll paraphrase is essentially the, because of the actions that he did against uh, Renary's son. It's complicated and made things a lot more complex than it needed uh, to be. And unfortunately, again, that was the only line that was in reference to what he did in season one's finale. Um, but who knows, maybe with the second episode, we'll have a further conversation about that. But unlike with the host, Sir Christian Cohn, being out of his station, I'm not really going to hold my breath for that other conversation about Allison and her son, mostly because I think the best time to have that conversation would have been in episode one. And correct me if I'm wrong, but very rarely does Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon, uh, I'm just talking about A Song of Ice and Fire in general, very rarely do they use flashbacks 
George R. R. Martin or the writers of the shows, do they use flashbacks to explain elements as already occurred? The only time I could remember this occurring is when we get backstory about Cersei Lannister from Game of Thrones and her conversation with Marguerite the Toad, I believe it was. Well, maybe it wasn't Marguerite, but the character's nickname was the Toad. The witch that Cersei has, the witch, the witch that lives in a cat near Castle Ewok, um, that Cersei goes out to meet with her friend. Um, so yeah, so because of that fact that this show, the series, really, really relies on flashbacks to go over things that happened in the past. That's why I believe we won't have that conversation between Allison and her son. Which again, I think it is a little bit unfortunate, but um, I'm still looking forward to that hopeful conversation about where Christian Co. Where a lack of guards was uh, for the royal keep, the royal uh, household, the royal private chambers, excuse me. <laughs> um yeah, so again, what was my point to begin with? If one wants to wait to watch the show after it's all out, you just run the risk of uh, spoilers from show-only viewers, spoilers from book show viewers, and also just being a little bit disappointed with a uh, with the ideas that one conjures. You might have that built-up expectation become reinforced as you continue waiting for the whole series to fall. So I would recommend if you want to watch the show, to go ahead and watch it uh, weekly. Uh, but if not, I totally respect one's decision to not watch it weekly and just wait for it to fully come out. With that being said, though, I think that's everything I want to discuss about House of the Dragon Season 2. It was not a review or a brief review. It's just I want to have a conversation about it because I'm not going to lie. I'm quite excited for Episode 2. And I'm looking forward to what's going to happen in the world of Restoros. Uh, I also heard... Um, I, I, um, I typically don't mind watching the previews for the next episode. But sometimes I, I prefer not to do that. Uh, just so I'll be a bit more surprised going into the following episode. But what I did hear over the uh, community is that supposedly this episode 2 is going to be 64 minutes long. Or maybe it was 74 minutes long. Essentially longer than a typical episode. So I don't know if that's true or not. But it makes me excited. Especially because it's barely episode 2. I wonder what kind of subject material the show has uh, that requires an extra running time if it is true. Um, but we will find out tonight. Again, thank you so much for watching slash listening, everyone. Oh, no, my tradition. I usually like to remove this for non-Digimon uh, videos. But unfortunately, I forgot. Oh, well. Uh, I'll get better at that as we continue along. Uh, my uh, question for everyone is, if you are watching House of the Dragon, are you planning to watch everything weekly? Or are you going to wait to, uh, for everything to drop? Obviously, if you're watching this video, more than likely, it's probably you're watching things weekly. So... Just in case that is you and you don't mind spoilers, that's right, you're here. Let me do another question. Uh, 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 who's your favorite character so far? I'd say I think my favorite character has to be the Valorians. I don't have a specific one. I just like the Valorian family in general. I think they're very uh, portrayed uh, well. Thank you so much for listening. That's watching. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone, and take care.